So we have done two talks already on the exponential age. Uh, the first one we talked about the technologies that are emerging that are sort of ushering in this era of exponential change. We talked about self-driving cars, we talked about artificial intelligence, we talked about machine learning, virtual reality, augmented reality, robotic automation, and then we talked about the shifts, the paradigm shifts that are uh, underway because of these technologies, things that are happening in the job market, things that are happening uh, in the education space, things that are happening in leisure time, and how all these things are being impacted. But each one of these uh, discussions, both of these discussions, have been uh, centered on sort of broad ideas. Today, the goal is to bring the idea of the exponential age and its potential down to a personal level. So while the first conversation that we had scared some folks because uh, the new technologies had the potential to really upset a lot of industry spaces and job markets, etc., and there was concern about disruption that that would bring, and the paradigm shifts that we discussed also looked rather disruptive. That is true that there is disruptive potential in this new era of the exponential age, but there's also tremendous promise. And that's what we're here to talk about today. To a degree that is unprecedented, based on the capabilities and technologies coming through the exponential age, we now have access to knowledge, talent, production, audience, and funding like we've never had before. I'll explain each one of those so you understand what it is that I mean. And you're going to get a good idea of how you can, how anyone can, take advantage of what the exponential age makes possible for an individual. <clears throat> Let's start with access to knowledge. Going beyond the old limitations. I'm sure at least one of these logos looks familiar. <laughs> right, so Google it. We know this verb. If you, if you don't know something, can't remember something, or are curious about something, Google is where we go now. It used to be that you'd call the smartest person that you know or look it up. Now we instantly Google. We have the answer in our pocket. I have, uh, as you know, I've had this discussion a few times as I watch people immediately reach for their phone for something that if they spent 30 seconds thinking about, they could probably figure it out. I want to encourage people to actually spend the 30 seconds rather than jump to the phone only because it helps us keep the muscle of the brain alive. And yet what these really represent, <clears throat> Wikipedia, that's the, uh, uh, the sphere, Wolfram Alpha, what the, and Google, what these represent is access to the collective knowledge of mankind at our fingertips. Wikipedia, how you get definitions for things, explore the history of things, find the inner linkings between things. It's a, it's a wonderful tool for doing this stuff. And Wolfram Alpha, if you don't know the, the formula that you need to calculate the tensile strength of concrete, for some reason, if that's important to you, Wolfram Alpha is the place you go for that type of thing. It, it enhances your intelligence and your capacity to perform calculations and the kind of work that engineers have been doing for a long time, right at your fingertips. YouTube. This is uh, an example of a YouTube video. Homemade wine, blueberry wine, how to make fruit wine. I don't know how to make wine, but if I watch this video, I'll have at least an idea. This is an eight minute video that explains this homemade sort of wine kit and process. I had a dryer at home that failed on me. Uh, it was the control unit that failed inside the, the upper part of the dryer. I have no idea how to fix a dryer. Completely clueless on this process. But I looked for my specific dryer with the specific problem that I was having on YouTube and I found a 12 minute explanation for how to repair this dryer with the exact problem that I had. Ordered the part, followed the steps, solved the problem. Myself. Something that I didn't know within 12 minutes I knew. This is a, a, a tutorial on Lightroom. Lightroom, much like Photoshop, is a program that people use to take the photos that they take and make them more attractive, to crop them, to shape them, to change the colors, etc., to make them more compelling. I, I don't know how to use Lightroom, or I didn't, but I do now, and I've been using it extensively with my photos, and it's significantly improved the quality of that work. Didn't have to go to a school, didn't have to have a degree. There was one specific thing that I wanted to be able to do, and one specific place I could go to learn how to do that. And some things that you may not have even thought of. How would you make a 1,000-shot one, one Nerf blaster? <laughs> 
So yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that you can learn how to do on YouTube. It's an extraordinary resource for um, tapping the intelligence of mankind. What's also interesting is that in this exponential age, while tools like Google, Wikipedia, Wolfram Alpha, and YouTube are all free, there's other educational opportunities that you would not assume could possibly be free. These include some of the logos you see on here. University of Pennsylvania, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Cornell, all free, all online. What do I mean? They have web cameras in those classrooms, live broadcasting the lectures from those schools for anyone to watch, for anyone to benefit from that knowledge. These are some of the best, most credentialed, most peer-reviewed and well-recognized professors in the world on any subject matter or discipline you can imagine being taught at these universities, broadcast live and for free. This makes it possible for the, uh, the son of a pauper to have the same education as the son of a billionaire. They don't get the degree, but they can get the education. These are other uh, sources for learning online now. I don't know if you've heard of any of these. Udacity, Udemy, Coursera, Khan Academy. Khan Academy is now being leveraged by the uh, uh, elementary schools and middle schools and high schools in Sonoma County. It's a great online resource. It's a tutorial. It started off in math, and now it covers every subject matter and discipline in the, um, uh, post, in the secondary education system and the elementary education system. A great way to supplement what happens in the classroom. And a fantastic le learning resource, even if you're not going to the classroom. If you want to re-up on some of the fundamentals, Khan Academy is a fantastic way to do that. And here it is, free and available to you online. Anyone here heard of Masterclass? Yeah, sure, because of me. <laughs> Masterclass is an incredible resource. You see the faces up here of Gordon Ramsay, Steph Curry, Jane Goodall. These are people teaching courses on Masterclass. Master courses by the people who you recognize to be the best in the world at what they do. Herbie Hancock teaches jazz. Martin Scorsese, filmmaking. Ron Howard, directing. Serena Williams, tennis. Judy Bloom, writing. Steve Martin, comedy. And Daniel Negreanu, poker. He was a three-time uh, World Poker Tour champion. The only person who's won it three times. He teaches a course. To subscribe to, uh, to Masterclass is $180 a year. And it gives you access to the education of the best of the best among humans in the world. That's incredible access. And these are part of what the exponential age makes possible. Knowledge at your fingertips, right? Repair just about anything. Pick up an artistic skill. Learn to defend yourself. Online courses in self-defense. Improve your design skills. Pick up just about any subject that you missed in college. Any skill that you want to have. Look it up. It's there. Learn from YouTube, somebody next door to you who just put up a web camera and decided to teach something that they know, all the way up to the best of the best at your fingertips for pennies or dollars. It's an amazing time. Access to talent. What do, I mean, what do I mean by this? Ultimately, what's made possible by the exponential age is it's enhancing every individual's capacity to do things that only large organizations were previously capable of, like bringing an idea to life. So if you have an idea or something drives you, you have a passion to do something, to create something, to bring something to the world, leveraging the tools of the exponential age now make this possible to an unprecedented level. Access to knowledge is step one. If there's something that you don't know how to do, it's right there at your fingertips. Access to talent is step two, and this is the power of the new gig economy. I myself am a member of the gig economy. I, I offer my services as a, what's known as a virtual chief marketing officer. A virtual chief marketing officer is someone who supports an organization as a chief marketing officer, supporting them with uh, campaigns, campaign design, helping them if they're going to trade shows, reaching out to audiences, growing their outreach, creative ways to expand their client base. But they can't maybe afford to bring on a full-time chief marketing officer or someone in a similar role. They need someone for 20% of a month. How could you possibly find someone willing to work for 20% of a month? Well, because as a member of the gig economy, I'm working 100% of the month, but for five different people, right? 
And this is now becoming a very common model. So as an individual or a very small business where it was previously not possible to gain access to the kind of talent at the C-suite level or people who were in career situations making, you know, $250,000 a year, now you have access to that kind of intelligence and that kind of talent. Some of the logos you see up on here, Fiverr, Upwork, one of the earliest ones which is uh, now gone was um, uh, Elance. I don't know if you guys remember Elance. Upwork uh, bought Elance and took them over, got their uh, group of providers and their audience. So that was very powerful. This is an example of a profile you'll see. This is on Freelancer. This is one of the websites that I'm talking about. This individual is a robotics engineer, a mechanical engineer, and he's also really good at pro project management. And it's not necessarily the case that these folks are in, you know, Lviv, Ukraine. This individual right here is based in the US. He's charging $20 an hour. And maybe, you know, he, maybe he looks young. He's only been a member since October of 2017, so he's got 98% of his jobs completed, he's 96% on budget, he's got a great rating and 39 reviews. This is how you find talent that you need in the exponential age to move an idea forward, to breathe life into something that you want to create in this world. These are examples of the kind of talent you can get access to. Chemical engineers, structural engineers, mechanical engineers. If you need three hours of a CAD designer's time, you can get it. In fact, about 20 years ago, when my dad and I started our own business, we worked with a guy out of uh, Sebastopol named Tom Greer. He ran an organization named Gizmo Designs. He was a CAD designer. Very early on, offering his services, much like these people do, for, you know, just hourly work. We needed, what, six hours of Tom's time to design for us, uh, to, to do computer-aided drafting for us, to design a 3D model for a product that we needed manufactured out of China. I, I don't know how to do CAD design, but that didn't stop us because somebody who has that talent was willing to make that talent available to us at an hourly rate. These are just examples, right? Access to production. Another major shift that the exponential age brings us beyond access to knowledge and access to talent is access to production capabilities. This is an example of a, uh, a CAD rendering, computer-aided drafting rendering of a part. You may have an idea for a product that you want to bring to market or some piece that you want to add to a car to change it somehow. If you can get it rendered in 3D, you can have it manufactured in so many ways and even very rapidly. Easy example now is 3D printing. 3D printing can be done with a huge variety of materials now. Plastics, certainly but also metals, even concrete. You can have something 3D printed in chrome. It's extraordinary how quickly you can get something from your mind into physical reality now. And there are shops in Santa Rosa that offer 3D printing by the hour, or they actually do it by, by volume. They measure the volume of the thing you're trying to print and charge you by volume. You have an idea, work, they actually have drafters there They'll draft it out for you and then boom, it gets printed, like manifest into reality. These are examples of parts that, get, that, that are produced by 3D printers. Your imagination is the limit. Anything you can imagine that's a solid physical object can be 3D printed. And the advanced 3D printers have the capability of printing down to nanometer precision. This is another example of something that we have access to, microfacturing. Microfacturing. This refers to uh, small manufacturing organizations that can produce small runs of things that you want to have made. In this case, I've got a picture of a, a group that does garment runs. So if, you, if you're into fashion, if fashion is what drives you and you want to bring an idea to life for a great jacket for travelers, let's say. You design the jacket. Uh, right now, the level, the level that I've seen at the minimum for uh, garment runs is about 30. 30. You can have 30 of something made in, in all the different sizes that you want because you came up with this idea. You don't need to hire dozens of seam, uh, um, sewers, seamstresses, seams, tailors. You don't need to have a vast warehouse. The capital requirements for bringing an idea to life with the access that we're given in the exponential age are so small. The barrier is becoming almost nil. This is an example of a CNC machine. This is about a $1.2 million machine. I can't afford that. 
There's no way I'm going to be able to buy that. But right now, down in Petaluma, there's a shop that has one of these that you can rent by the hour for a few hundred dollars. So if you get a, an idea that you need machined out of a block of aluminum, a capacity that was once available only to a large organization is now right there, within reach of everyone. These are some parts that are machined out of aluminum blocks for use in whatever dimensions they're intended for. I actually got the list. I, I looked this up. These are the guys who are offering hourly CNC, uh, CNC machine access, right? So if you need a part machined, there's a lot of them in our area. This is a great device. This is our, an Arduino. An Arduino is a programmable microcontroller that can run lights, motors, sensors, display screens. It's a hobbyist's toy. Something that you're imagining for, uh, let's say, a security system in a house. Something you're imagining for an alarm clock on your nightstand. If it requires programming, you have access to programmers now. If it requires mechanical engineering, you have access to that. There's kids right now out in Sebastopol based out of an organization called Make. This is the same group that does Make Magazine, who sit around tinkering with Arduinos and can't wait for you to show up with a cool project. They'll do this stuff for free to micro-control, let's say, a, a toy that you want to drive around and do something. You come up with the idea, the barrier is almost entirely gone now. Maybe a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and a tiny bit of money. And what you can bring to life now is amazing. Access to audience. This is important, obviously, because if you want to come up with an idea and your goal is to reach a large audience, how will you do that without vast amounts of money? Because it used to be the answer to almost every one of these things. Production, talent, intelligence, knowledge was all the answer was money. Now it's just a little bit of effort, a little bit of time. The modern tools of accessing an audience, right? YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. These are enormously powerful ways to reach people. That's why I'm recording this talk right now. I post everything that I do through YouTube so that I can share it with the audience that I'm trying to reach. It is so easy to reach billions. It's kind of crazy. What's really crazy is when you look at the videos that actually reach billions, it's a little embarrassing for mankind. But still, it is, there are so many channels that can give you access. And if you don't know how to use Twitter, we'll start back with point number one, knowledge is available to you. And if you don't want to bother learning the knowledge, people who have that talent are available to you for $20 an hour. Right? Access to funding. Okay, so if you don't have money or um, making the point that you don't need it, how do you get there? These are all very powerful, well worn paths now. You guys have heard of Kickstarter, right? This is the combination of the idea of how do you get funding and how do you reach an audience. If you have an idea, you don't even need to make it real, you just need to be able to communicate it well and post it through websites whose job it is to reach people who are looking for cool ideas. I mean, that channel is just built for you. And if you can communicate an idea well, you've never built something, you have an idea for, like I said, like an alarm clock. You have an idea, you want to explain it, you're passionate about it, it means something to you. Communicate to these audiences through these channels and they will say, I will buy that. You've never made one of these things and this person says they'll buy it. If you need to get to a threshold of 100, 500, 1,000 people say, I'll buy it, what they do is they enter their credit card, they pay nothing until you hit the threshold for how many people you need in order to actually go into a production mode. So if you need 1,000 people, you promote, you do your great video, you, you share your video through Facebook, through Twitter, through YouTube, whatever, you bring these people in, if they love your idea, they say, I'll buy that when you make that, you get to 1,000, you go to work. Microfinancing, a very powerful tool of the exponential age, and one more reason why the barrier is nil. The new, the new market paradigm is very interesting. You guys know Zappos? Have you heard of Zappos? Online shoe seller. Initially, the idea of online shoes sounds insane. Who is going to buy shoes without trying them on? Of course, that proved to be no problem at all. In fact, now we buy mattresses online, which is still insane to me. But still, people buying shoes online. How did Tony do this? Tony did not start with a big distribution network, 
a big warehouse, people producing shoes for him, a massive shipping uh, distribution, none of that. He got nothing. He put pictures of shoes online on a website called Zappos, and when people bought those shoes, he went and bought those shoes. He didn't even have the inventory. He just had the idea that people would appreciate the convenience of buying shoes online. And man, did that model prove to work out. Essentially, this is what's known as the vapor model. Vapor used to be a bad word, especially in the software space. Vapor meant you were claiming that you had a thing that would do something, but you haven't really built that yet. Now people get all excited about betas and things that haven't actually been created or shared with the marketplace yet so they can try it out and be the first person to say what they think about it. And Vapor is the standard pathway for how something gets done now. Instead of, I think this is a good idea, I'm going to invest in this, I'm going to get it built, then I'm going to take it to market, it's take it to market first. Figure out if it's a good idea. If it happens to be a good idea, I'm going to get it funded, then I'm going to build it. It's a completely backwards arrangement, but it works a lot better. It allows for so many more ideas to catch traction and awareness. Dropbox, anyone use Dropbox? Dropbox is a file sharing uh, service online. So if I've got a big file and I want my dad to have that big file, I can use Dropbox to store it for myself or share it with him. Very easy. Total vapor. When Dropbox first came out, it was a video about software. And the video that they created was faked. The software wasn't real. They were explaining an idea for how you could store your files on the cloud. And when you have them there, it's really easy to share them. And that solves the hassle that you're dealing with with sharing things over email. People loved it. And then they built it. This is a, a solution that uh, I was a part of creating. This is Collaborize Classroom. Initially, the company that, that created Collaborize Classroom had a collaboration tool for businesses to work with uh, business teams and essentially collaborate online and, and uh, achieve higher productivity by using tools online. We suspected that Collaborize as a tool would work well in the education space. We did not create that solution initially. We changed a couple words on the solution that we had and put it in teachers' hands to find out, does this work? Turned out that it did. And from what we learned in that experiment, we were clear it does make sense for actually we'll invest the money to create a educationally dedicated version of this solution. This one is amazing to me. This, uh, this is Relay Robot or Relay Bot. Relay Bot is uh, now in hotels and serves as this automated gizmo to take things like toothbrushes and shampoo up to rooms and towels and things like that. This was prototyped, conceived, prototyped, and tested in one week. Google's uh, innovation team has developed a process that is called the Google Sprint. And they have perfected this process of bringing an idea from conception to validation inside a single week. And I show you this one example. There's many in the book, uh, Google Sprint's book. This one, to me, is the one that, that sells it. Because if you're going to go this intense, right? You have nothing to, I have a prototype of a robot that's going to successfully execute a trial of a concept. That's an amazing leap in one week, but it's still totally possible. Part of how they did this, this thing is supposed to be autonomous. Well, it is autonomous now, but initially it only appeared to be autonomous. They literally had a guy in one of the hotel rooms in this hotel operating this thing with a camera and a PlayStation controller while the other person was doing the live like audible beeps and bloops on a microphone to drive this thing around, but the guests loved it. They thought it was adorable, they couldn't wait for it to come back, and they validated that idea. Here's kind of the sum up on this whole thing. The potential of the exponential age is enormous. And I argue for those who were here for the first two talks, the potential is much greater than the fears. If you let the fears paralyze you, you're missing an amazing opportunity. It's never been more possible to bring something to life than it is here today. Getting organized, start hacking, and get out there, right? Putting an idea out in front is how you start. It's not where you finish. I encourage you, if you have an idea that you want to bring to life, make it happen. Take some pictures. 
do the YouTube video. If you want to go into Kickstarter to see if you can get it funded, find someone who can help you prototype it. Bring it into 3D reality. The access that you have, like I said, unprecedented, and the opportunity equally so. In a time when everybody has access to these tools, there is one thing, in my opinion, that will separate the people that succeed from the people that do not. And that is that you have selected something that you are passionate about. Simon Sinek has a great process for this. It's the golden circle, starting with the why. If the why you do something is because you're gonna make money, you haven't found it yet. If the why you do something is because that's what I'm passionate about doing, the way you stand out in Kickstarter, in YouTube, in Instagram, and in Twitter will put you above anybody else. So while you do have, in this day and age, incredible potential and capacities at your fingertips, make sure that you go at it with something that you're passionate about. And if you're not sure what that is, I recommend these three questions. Asking yourself, it used to be you asked yourself, what do I wanna do? That's a good question, but I think these three questions are more powerful, more meaningful. What experiences do I wanna have? What ways do I wanna grow? And how do I wanna give back? I believe that if you explore these questions deeply for yourself, you will find that the ideas that you're passionate about emerge within the framework of the answers that you provide yourself. Now, as far as um, really bringing something to life, if you're not looking to invest money in something, these are the things that, that these are the investments of the modern age. This is what it takes, because we've already proved it doesn't take the money, right? And it doesn't take all the things that we have access to now. These are the things that make it work. Investing your passion, that's what I just talked about ego and comfort, to be willing to put your idea out there and have people tell you your baby is ugly. It does take an investment of ego and an investment of comfort. So be willing to expend it, to have less of it than when you started, when you're there. Um, creativity, obviously investing your creativity, time and lunch. Why do I say lunch? I'll take a lunch with any one of you. Honestly, truly, I will. If you have an idea and you want guidance on how to move it forward, if you want me to suggest the next step for you, or even connect you with the people who can get that done. I'm happy to have a lunch with you. It's fun for me to do. This is what I do now, right? Helping people understand the magic and the power of the exponential age. And I will ask of you, if you know anybody who has a venue like this lovely place, thank you, Lori, uh, or is connected with a university. I've been teaching at the uh, junior college and now next year they want me to uh, do like a full year program, which I'm thrilled about. I am looking for um, pathways, audiences, to educate about the promise of this exponential age because it's wonderful to see when people have great ideas that they can truly bring to life and live a life that they're passionate about. That's what I hope to do. Let me know afterwards if, if you have a connection like that. I, I'd love to follow through. Do you have any questions for me? Yes. Okay, so somebody has a, an infantile kind of idea, like, a, you know, like a, just a concept. What kinds of places do they go to initially to get feedback I mean, you know, as to their itty bitty, you know, gee, I'm thinking about? Well, I love this question. They, where do they start to get their feedback? What kind of a forum is it? Great. Place? The classic is the family friends, but you want to go beyond that. The easiest thing to find online now are communities of interest. If you have an idea, um, let's say you're uh, interested in um, crockpot cooking. <laughs> crockpot cooking is a hashtag on Twitter right now. If you have an idea for a video, that, oh sorry, if you have an idea and you can just record, and I'm not talking about Hollywood, set up your phone with the video recording and just present your idea, put, put that up on YouTube and then post that to Twitter with the hashtag crockpot cooking, right? And then people who are following that because they're interested in what that community is finding, presenting, and sharing will see that. And if right away in your video you say, I'm really just looking for your feedback, here's my idea, that's how you can get there. Other questions? Great. Stunned. <laughs> Can, I, can we see your uh, physical ad, the Wrangler ad? I will be happy to share that with you. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull that up. But uh, anything else then? It's okay. Um, the Wrangler ad, so I'll, I'll close because the Wrangler ad has really nothing to do with this talk necessarily. But oh, it does. <clears throat> um, I will say that the, uh, 
uh, the Wrangler ad, for me, if there's any connection, it's the value of being able to attract people by sharing your personality. Um, oh, that's not what I wanted to do, sorry. I have to switch accounts. Being able to attract people to, uh, to you, to your ideas, by sharing your personality rather than just, your, rather than just your, the concept that you're trying to get people to pay attention to. Sorry. So here's the thing. Visiquate has succeeded in, in amassing a very large audience because what we're not doing is sending out, come check out our new product, come to our next talk, come do this, come do that. It's, I'm going to produce something that's valuable for you right now. And it's valuable for you because it's information on how you succeed without my product. It's how you succeed in the space that we operate in. Or it's something that's funny and entertaining. And if you continue to, to present to the audience that you gain things that are valuable, they will be interested in following you and sharing you to other people because they like sharing what's valuable to them to other people. And then occasionally you make an ask. Gary Vaynerchuk, who's really well known for creating success in social media marketing, he wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And this is exactly what he's meaning. Value, 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 ask. And if you follow this principle, you could do really, really well in social media. So this is a video that we created because it's humorous. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it. But... So before you see this data wrangler, so you understand, Visiquate is an organization that does uh, that supports enterprise healthcare organizations with data analytics solutions. They have enormous volumes of data that are fantastically complicated. Uh, and there's a really huge opportunity that exists in that data for efficiency gains and ultimately improving the quality of American healthcare. But because the data is so enormous and so complex, it's difficult for humans to find the opportunities. We develop artificial intelligence solutions to help those enterprise healthcare systems find those opportunities. Data wrangling is a term in that industry for organizing all of your data, bringing it into one place so that you can report on it and find those insights. So wrangling essentially your data into one place. We've taken a play on this term with this commercial, which is really just intended to be fun. So, uh, so we've taken data wrangling to more of a cowboy concept. When data wrangling first come onto the scene, data was tiny, cute even. Little buggers running around. And the techniques they were using to keep it all together, I mean, total wild west. Cut and paste on spreadsheets, manual calculations, real hack and whack wrangling. Well, I'm talking the ugliest joins you ever seen. Nothing tied together, disagreement all over the place. Nowadays, you mess up a joint and someone's gonna get hurt. Uh, you see guys out there now trying to get a hold of their data with homegrown and open source moves, and man, it's not pretty. Your heart goes out to them. They're, they're just trying to do the job they've been handed, but the tools and methods just can't cut it. Well, 2020 used to seem so far away, but now it's right around the corner. And modern data looks like it's from a sci-fi movie. I mean, huge suckers moving at speeds. You turn your back on those things, They'll run you right over and not even blink. We're not talking about fluffy little kilobytes no more. Terabytes, petabytes, exabytes. You really need to know what you're doing. Being a top competitor in data wrangling is a matter of being constantly on top of your game. You want to wrangle modern healthcare financial data, you bring the right tools, or you're going to see modern healthcare from the other end. This is roll your sleeves up, get your gear on, and do the hard work, serious wrangling. Well, I mean, it feels really good. You know, somebody call you and they got hordes of data running wild all over the place. You get in there, drive everything together, and make it work. And then you see the look on your face, 
And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. So, this, it is fun to share that. Uh, um, and we have volumes of data that we, sorry, uh, of material that we put out that's about our products, that's about our subject matter expertise, that's, um, that's about how to succeed. But every once in a while, a little personality is what sets you apart from the crowd. And if you are going to pursue a passion and bring a market, uh, sorry, bring, bring something that's meaningful to you to market using the tools of the exponential age, don't forget you. Because you and what you're passionate about, that's how you stand out. So take some time to have some fun and express yourself because people want to connect with who it is that's bringing the idea rather than just the idea. Because anyone now can bring an idea to market, but it's that passion and who you are that's really going to make it work for you. Thanks again. <laughs>